Joe Biden's presidency has always been a train wreck, but now have his decisions literally caused one? <laughs> Hello there, you six million awakening wonders. Thanks for joining me on this voyage towards truth and freedom, where we question mainstream narratives, where we present you with alternative facts, where we engage in a discourse with you as equals on a journey together to discover truth. Could this Ohio train wreck be another opportunity for us to demonstrate how ineptitude, profiteering, broken promises by the Biden administration have led to more suffering and an environmental disaster that some are saying is the next Chernobyl? Let's have a look at how the mainstream media are conveying this. Tonight, outrage growing. Less than two weeks after that massive train derailment and the controlled burn of hazardous chemicals sent up a toxic plume of black smoke in East Palestine, Ohio. Two weeks? Do you think they kept it out of the news in some sort of way? Has there been anything weird floating around distracting us? Residents demanding answers, complaining of burning eyes, nausea, headaches, and a pungent odor, and reporting dead animals. Officials confirming 3,500 fish killed by the chemicals. State officials now suggest drinking bottled water after telling evacuated residents it was safe to return home. It's safe to return home. Don't drink the water and don't look at those fish. Crews now work to remove soil and wreckage, possibly contaminated by chemicals like vinyl chloride, suspected of causing cancer. So it's not all bad news. Again today, officials saying constant tests and monitoring of the air and water show the environment is safe. Hmm, I don't feel totally reassured, do you? Don't know whether it's the cancer or the dead fish, but something tells me this water isn't a okay. Oh, tastes a bit dead fishy and cancery. Shut up, you conspiracy theorist. Local community members and activists across the country have sounded the alarms regarding the impact the incident could have on public health and environment. Many have pointed to reports of animals dying en masse as evidence. I don't know, maybe these animals all just decided to take their own lives because of Putin. Yet despite the public outcry over the environmental and public health catastrophe, the actions of Ohio authorities reflect an attitude of concealment. That doesn't seem like state authorities. Many can concerns of East Palestine residents, as well as those of the rest of the nation, stem from the fact that the derailed train had 20 cars carrying hazardous materials. Oh, you think because there's 20 carriages of hazardous materials that that could cause an environmental disaster and carcinogenic materials and 3,500 dead fish in the water? Those carriages full of carcinogenic materials were a present for your birthday and you have spoiled it. You're just like your father. You're she seems a bit unwell at the moment. Don't know what's causing it. <laughs> The government seems to have outsourced the response and clean-up to Norfolk Southern, the company responsible for the disaster. Okay, we're gonna need somebody reliable to clean up the consequences of this disaster. I got an idea, sir. Go on. How about the very people that caused the disaster? What a ridiculous idea! That would be like entrusting the response to the pandemic to the very people who caused the pandemic. And there's no way that happened. Whose policy is frustrated and confused, locals? I'm feeling frustrated and confused! and nauseous. Hmm, those are actually some of the symptoms. How are your eyes? Itchy! Okay, get this guy to the hospital. End of interview. Cut! That includes the company's decision to do a controlled burning. <laughs> controlled burning? That's what I would have done when I was about 14. I don't know. Should we just set fire to it and see what happens? No! No! <laughs> this is not good that we have spilled all these chemicals onto this beautiful country and into these rivers. What shall we do? Uh, I don't know. What if we set fire to it? <laughs> it's making it worse. Controlled burning to release the chemicals leading to a black plume of smoke. Yeah, that is what happens. Continuously belching carcinogens into the air, whose effects one hazardous materials expert warned may take years or even decades to be felt. That's weird, isn't it? You can do something now and it could be like 10 years till you know the consequences. Can't think of any other news stories like that. Five of the derailed cars contained vinyl chloride, a carcinogen linked to various forms of cancer. There's a lot of what ifs. Yeah, I can feel that. What if this causes cancer? What if this is the result of ineptitude? What if we paid rail workers more? What if we replaced antiquated machinery? What if, instead of saying we care about the environment when you don't have to do anything except stuff that benefits corporations, when there's an actual environmental disaster caused by corporations, you do something about it? No. There's a lot of what ifs and we're gonna be 
be looking at this thing 5, 10, 15, 20 years down the line, Silverado Caggiano, a hazardous materialist specialist, told News Nation. The same expert criticised as backwards the decision to encourage people to return to their homes after a limited evacuation of 1,500 to 2,000 local residents. That's going to be one of those stories that goes on for a while. People are going to be saying, like, they told us to go back to our homes. Now, this person's got cancer. Watch out for this one. Not only did the Environmental Protection Agency later reveal that the train was transporting additional chemicals no one knew about that may have been released in the derailment, but those who returned soon found themselves walking into what looks, feels, smells, and tastes like a contaminated zone. Just because something looks, feels, smells, and tastes like a contaminated zone doesn't mean it's a contaminated zone. Who are you going to trust? Your own five senses or the government and corporations? That's all of the senses, other than sounds. And sixth sense, I see dead fishes. Following the February 3rd train derailment in East Palestine, Ohio, users on social media began sharing photos of an ominous black cloud hanging over the town. And fears that the disaster would become the new Chernobyl, which resulted in the spread of radioactive contaminants in Ukraine and across Europe. The Chernobyl incident occurred after a series of safety measures during a nuclear reactor test were ignored, resulting in a huge explosion and fire that spread large amounts of radioactive chemicals. But what is the connection between safety measures and ignored safety measures in these two cases? And why has Joe Biden directly contributed to this problem through decisions made and promises broken? For unionised rail workers, the train derailment exposes systemic failures in a railroad system that is driven by profit, not safety. Have you seen that anywhere else, like the farmers? industry, like current wars. Railroad Workers United writes, In the last 10 years, the Class 1 carriers, rail companies with the highest revenues, have dramatically increased both the length and tonnage of the average train, while cutting back on maintenance and inspection, and we have a time bomb ticking. Just because we're cutting back on maintenance and inspection, while simultaneously increasing the length and tonnage of trains, that's not a disaster waiting to happen. Let's make them bigger and heavier and stop checking them and looking at them and maintaining them. And a boss is bro- Problem in Ohio. Hmm, what could have caused this thing? Uh, Putin! I'm on the internet right now. You're on the internet right now. But who else knows you are? If you've messaged anybody this week, would you share with us the names of the people you've messaged? Uh, Senator, no, I would probably not choose to do that publicly here. What's playing out now at big tech companies and social media sites sets a dangerous precedent. Have you ever wondered how free to access tech giants make their money? Have you? Have you wondered? Well, it's by tracking your searches, your video history, and everything you click on, then selling off your sensitive data. When you use ExpressVPN, you anonymize your online presence by hiding your IP address. That makes your activity more difficult to trace and sell. Whatever you're looking at, I'm not judging you. That's your business. If you want to look at that, it don't matter. Looking at our most private of places, our nooks, our crannies, our crevices. Oh no, you effing well didn't. Not now, we just express VPN you right where it hurts. One revolutionary tool we can start with right now is stopping the Googles, the Facebooks, the Alphabets and the Sesame Streets from spying on our most intimate nooks. I bloody well won't have it and neither should you. Click on the link below. Visit expressvpn.com forward slash brand and then you can be like me, fighting against injustice everywhere. Stay free. But surely there must be another political party that would do things differently. Surely the system works. A report by The Lever highlighted that in 2017, during Republican Donald Trump's presidency, Norfolk Southern lobbyists successfully rescinded regulations aimed at improving railroad safety regulations. Specifically, the company successfully beat back measures that would require train cars carrying hazardous, flammable materials to be equipped with electronic brakes, which can stop trains more effectively than conventional brakes, claiming that safety regulations would impose tremendous costs without providing offsetting safety benefits. Yeah, who needs trains to be able to stop suddenly preventing 20 carriages full of chemicals spilling onto Ohio and disrupting the environment for 10, 20 years into the future? What a waste of money. But I bet when Biden came in, he did something to remedy that. The Biden administration has not moved to reinstate the brake rule or expand the kinds of trains subjected to tougher safety regulations. Oh. Secretary of Transportation Pete Buttigieg has now resorted to falsely suggesting that he 
does not have the power to compel the rail industry to upgrade its safety equipment and procedures. I you get a bit tired of government officials saying like, oh, big pharma, we can't do anything about it. Oh, trains, we can't do anything about it. What are you then? What is it that you are doing? Buttigieg indicated that he cannot reinstate the law requiring some trains carrying hazardous materials to replace their Civil War era braking systems with new electronically controlled pneumatic ECP brake technology. You can't have Civil War technology transporting ultra hazardous chemicals. That don't even sound right, does it? You wouldn't send Civil War soldiers to fight in Ukraine, although maybe Biden will. In order to give more aid to Ukraine, we're sending General Custer and a bunch of those other guys in wacky grey uniforms over there to Ukraine. But it's still not a war. We're constrained by law on some areas of rail regulation, like the breaking rule withdrawn by the Trump administration in 2018 because of a law passed by Congress in 2015, Buttigieg wrote. They're always doing that. Have you noticed that? They always just blame the other party. What's the goal of government? What's the aim of government? Isn't it to meaningfully provide municipal facilities that are a reflection of the requirements of the nation and states that you're elected to serve? Or is it to serve the interests of giant corporations and then just blame each other for why ordinary people and indeed Ohio are suffering? Let me know in the chat, let me know in the comments. But rail law and regulatory experts interviewed by The Lever agreed that Batujiji's transportation department can and should redo that analysis to allow for a reinstatement of the breaking rule, saying that nothing prevents Batujiji from using his existing rulemaking authority to expand the definition of a high hazard flammable train to cover trains like the one in Ohio. So he could do it, but he's simply not doing it. As usual, what you get is blame, service of corporate interests above the interests of ordinary people, and lying. I bet Norfolk Southern probably can't even afford to replace those brakes. They're probably just struggling to get by, doing their best with a tiny little railroad interest that's barely making ends meet. Norfolk Southern made a record of over $12 billion in revenue last year and recently announced a $10 million stock buyback program. Oh great, so they're making huge profits and they're using those profits to do things to manipulate their own stock prices instead of doing things like putting brakes on your trains (laughs) instead of ones that were there when Abraham Lincoln was president. Last year, railroad workers in the United States were on the cusp of a strike. Workers were demanding more sick leave to combat the effects of precision scheduled railroading, a corporate scheme to cut costs by demanding more work from fewer workers. Precision scheduled railroading, that's what they called it. What is that really? Uh, well, it's brilliant really. We're going to precisely sack everybody and then schedule that they work more. Oh, you're a genius. Infamously, the US President Joe Biden and the US Congress blocked rail workers' right to strike by rapidly passing legislation legislation that forced workers to accept an agreement without sick days. Biden campaigned as the most pro-worker president in history. He was always saying stuff like that. When it comes to the crunch, though, they will always put ordinary Americans' interests behind corporate interests, whether that's supporting their right to be paid properly and work reasonable hours, or whether it's when there's an environmental disaster. Look how much time they spend talking about whether or not they care about the environment. When it comes to the crunch, though, they don't care about the environment at all. As part of his 2020 presidential campaign, Biden pledged that it would ensure all workers have at least seven paid sick days. Well, they're going to need them. The US Senate voted to deny 125,000 rail workers a handful of paid sick days that would have cost the equivalent of just four days of recent profits made by senators, railroad industry donors. Another easy way to measure where power lies and what direction the system is heading in. While opposing a plan that would have required them to spend $321 million to give workers seven paid sick days, the main railroad companies raked in more than $7 billion in profits and paid out over $1.8 billion in dividends in a year where they and their lobbying groups have spent more than $13 million lobbying Congress. Railroad Workers United argues that precision scheduled railroading and the overworking layoffs and lack of safety measures that unionized workers were fighting for last year were a primary reason for the derailment. More Perfect Union has pointed out that rail companies have cut 22% of railroad jobs since 2017. Unionized workers were planning to use their right to strike to combat this trend in 2022. Instead, they were forced back to work on penalty of arrest. So that's what supporting workers looks like to Joe Biden. And these are the consequences of cost cutting and creating profit and opportunity for dividends instead of basic duty. This is not impacting free market economics. What this is doing is creating environmental disasters and denying ordinary Americans the right to a living wage and reasonable holidays. We are now seeing the consequences of a hypocritical government that uses rhetoric when necessary, whether it's we love the environment or we 
will protect ordinary Americans. When it comes to the crunch, what do they do? Judge them by their actions. Stay awake. Don't get all caught up in the, we're doing this, this is the best ever presidency for this, and we've achieved this and that. Empty rhetoric, no different, no improvement, no change, no concern for ordinary Americans, no concern for the planet. Where's the concern for the planet right now? Why are they hushing it up? Why is this story not being covered accurately in mainstream media? Why is the sky full of irrelevant balloons and hot air when people should be talking about corruption, hypocrisy, pollution and ineptitude at ground level? The move was the latest and possibly starkest example of the chasm between Biden's pro-worker rhetoric during his campaign and presidency and the numerous pro-corporate actions he has taken in the White House. So there you have it. Joe Biden's presidency sleeps with the fishes. 3,500 dead fish, one incumbent liar and hypocrite who claims to care about the environment, who claims to care about workers, except for when it actually matters. But that's just what I think. Why don't you tell me what you think in the comments and the chat? If you enjoyed this video, stay with us and watch these. Remember, turn on the notification bell and subscribe. The algorithm is part of the system. We make great content every single day and we want you to see it all. More important than any of that though is that you please, if you can, stay free.